What's up, guys? Part-time rogue here with my co-host Hacker Head Off, back with some more Doki Doki Literature Club. So, last episode we left off right before we were going to sit down, read our special book with Yuri, and share some candy. So, let's pick up where we left off and find out just what happens. Dang, look at the dust particle effect around her. Even, you know, oh, look I how pu beautiful she is. Oh, yeah, nice. I know. Yuri look opens the book with both hands. Gorgeous. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take, a then I oh, take another God. chocolate. She gonna feed that girl? Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips. As if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. Oh god. I apprehensively place the chocolate there in There it mouth. is in her mouth! <laughs> Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Herbert. So Sorry. <laughs> I, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... well... She ate it. She did ate it. You were just helping. That's something that... friends do. <laughs> right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but yeah! <laughs> yeah, that, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. She's it, using him for chocolate. She really is into women. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. Something else is pounding. You know what I'm saying? But this time Yuri's <laughs> eyes meet mine. Dot, dot, dot. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling into the rhythm of her breasts. You're staring into her eyes while also watching her breasts? <laughs> I raise my arm. Uh. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> oh, god! Oh, 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 what the... Oh. Uh. <laughs> She jolt Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Ripper, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Oh, God, we almost got caught in the act. Okay, thanks. How seductive feeding someone chocolates. It's chocolate is apparently an aphrodisiac. The spell is abruptly broken. The spell? Uh, I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. What a bitch. Who do I want to share my poem with first? <gasps> Your girl? You can pick. Up to you. Well, we were just flirting hard. Yeah, if you, if you if you want to take a break from a brief break from Yuri, we, we might have to take save her for last. Save the best for last, right? I understand that. Mm -hmm. We might have to save it for last. I get it. All right, Siori first again. Oh, I like this one, Rupert. It has some nice feelings in it. Feelings? Uh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. I'm just, the, you know, the cute friend. <laughs> but that's just why I, I can go by my heart. Yeah, if it makes sense for me to feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not the, sure that's exactly how it works. And again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty Holy important shit. part of this whole thing. I know why this game is so... Yeah, like, maybe. This game is, like, the horror thing is that she goes by her heart, so every time you write a better poem, she contracts more and more of a heart disease. Eventually <laughs> 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 she says heart uh, attack. <laughs> honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you at least try giving it some thought? 
Oh, uh, you want me to write? So you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Uh, yeah, right, right. That's totally where I was going with that. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? I'm giving the blank look that cats give. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. <laughs> that's literally like the, the dead out of the look that cats give you when they don't know what's happening. Like, and they're just looking at you. I think that's just your cat. No, more than just Shakira does that. My cat never does yeah, that. Yeah, because your cat's always angry. Anyway, let's see. She always knows what's up. She really does. Unless she's spooked. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. Oh, that's even my Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Siori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Siori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is. There's a blank cat look again. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Herbert. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Sure. Bottles. Bottles. I pop off my scalp what like the, the lid of a fuck? cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. What? Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. What the fuck? I reach inside what? my thumbs and forefingers all put out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends, each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a little bottle to save the day. What the fuck? Well, let's just see where this is going. Maybe I'm... it's the poems that are that yeah, are I'm scary. Yeah, I'm certain. Night after night, more dreams. Friends after friends, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like explore, it like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging, digging, sc and scraping, and scraping. Uh, like do exploring no, a dark cave with your there. fingers, huh? Yeah, yeah okay. but, but, uh, listen, this, I'm concerned. Keep reading. <laughs> I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends took through my locked front door. Oh, look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in, in come my friends. If they come in such a hurry, don't they want my bottles that much? Oh, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them up from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. So she knows she's dumb. Okay, thank God it's not just us. Holy, Holy crap. Yeah. Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. I do like me a creepy girl. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful? Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to... I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing is the best. Or writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, is this like the turning point of this game? Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. it no, before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those things. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. 
Who's next? Uh, I don't know. Uh, can we go to the cute girl? I need I need a contrast of what this, just happened. This cute girl. Yeah. Well, the, like she's the, the girl who likes cute stuff. She's also my favorite voice to do. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Ah, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Maybe that was a compliment. <laughs> I'm glad to see someone recognizes my experience. <laughs> Well then, keep practicing. Maybe you'll get as be as good as me someday. That's uh, something tells me not to keep completely miss the point. <laughs> Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayoi's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really know. You never really stuck me as her type. Sayoi has a type all of a sudden. Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Fluffy. <laughs> I mean, she's like a cat. <laughs> Sayori's like a cat. She's like dragging. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Wow, she just like called me a piece of crap. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Uh, that was a little You're the one who likes this one. Think of it this way. If it weren't for me... She would probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. That's true, she's kind of airheaded. You could say that we each take care of each other in our own way. Mm, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Mickey, wriggly. You don't have to do the mouse thing. I can read that. I, I, I was reading. Mickey, wriggly, I was reading along. hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Fucking weirdos. <laughs> One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and it and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. But her friends start to like spiders too, so I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm going to tell everyone. This seems direct. Not that right. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you could explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can't be, yeah, it can be about every anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone needs that kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares if someone like what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. I think she likes spiders. I don't think she likes spiders. She's totally Amy. Well, Her name is not right. Amy. At least I can relate to that. She met Amy and from I'm sure Sonic. A lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Of course. Monica, save your for last. Sure. Hi again, Rupert. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going, it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. 
Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Crap. Mm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. He has totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in the head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. She's actually... meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. She's actually murdered in the entire class. Yeah, over why and over. is <laughs> why can we win over the other three but not her? With the uh, with Monica? the yeah. Mm. It's weird, right? Still defending her like that. You must be pretty into her with my awkward back pose. Huh? You <laughs> completely misunderstood. Uh, <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. <laughs> Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. What a dirty ass. Wait, really? Liar. Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers yeah, that last part to me. Fictional one anyway. It's just a hunch, but. Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the one. That, I like the way this one turned out. So I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalk... What? Like playing a chalkboard <laughs> on a, a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me? Load me. Yeah. Huh. Scroll back up about the sine, cosine, tangent. Huh. This is all Illuminati shit, isn't it? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> she doesn't like math homework. I think she was drowning in math oh homework. Oh my god. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my, with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as, as a physical expression of feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip for the day! Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> you never know when that might, when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected might happen. <laughs> oh, Wait, is this tip even about writing? Oh my god. What am I even talking about? The game is breaking itself. <laughs> You're in the Twilight Zone now. <laughs> uh, safe? Oh, Jesus fuck, yeah, we haven't been saved. <laughs> Alright, cool! Good, 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 good. Okay, that's it. That saved it, right? It saved, right? Yes? Yeah, I don't know how to go back. Return. Return, return, Oh, oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> I see you saved the fucking game there. <laughs> that's my advice that's my for today. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I'm scared now. Uh, I guess we're gonna go to Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Dot, dot, dot. Yuri stares at the poem. <laughs> Do you like it? Rupert, this one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagine imagery. You really like portray like the the oblivious uh, <laughs> protagonist. I, uh, that is me. <laughs> Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. It's oh, fine. My bad. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. 
It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never shared your writing before? You're really not. <sighs> really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself, and besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri Knotts. Huh. You mean your close friends? Dot dot dot. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. She doesn't have any close friends. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It had raccoons, uh, near, like one of the most high, most it, likely creatures to uh, contract rabies in the north. It happened in the dead of night. When I was, I'm reading this. The raccoon. While I was slicing bread for a guilty snack, my attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon is, that is fed will always come back for more, the enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light cutting off my knife. To the very can you just go all the, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so that my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon always shows its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlo ah, Pavlonian conditioning, I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. So okay. I am the raccoon, and she's going to murder me. Got it. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. So. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah. If I take it as a face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Like killing. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Huh? She... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. She's the girl with spiders. <laughs> to me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Except blackmail. Or if she holds a fucking knife to you. Show me what I want to Well, thank you now. for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Me and you too, girlfriend. I, I might be ranting a little bit now. I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, you know, the two things I know about you in these four days. <laughs> there really aren't many people like you, Rupert. That's, that's exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, like how your name is Rupert, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, wow. it's, it's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writings. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling, you know. <laughs> and to think, and you're to thank for that. It's it's nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. 